Hey everybody, this is Matthew Doyle for Autodesk, bringing you some new tutorials on Maya and Maya LT 2017 Update 3. And today we're going to be covering specifically the new UV Editor workflow improvements. There have been significant changes to the UV Editor as far as improving the speed of selection highlighting and as far as the connection between the 3D viewport. And also a new UV toolkit has been added inside of the UV Editor. And if you're familiar with the modeling toolkit in Maya and Maya LT, you're going to find the UV toolkit is very similar in the layout. It's a much more organized layout, very artist friendly, very visual. Everything is laid out in a, con in a consistent manner that makes sense for the tools. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial. We're going to cover most of the tools in pretty good detail. Not all of them because some of the tools have existed in previous versions of Maya and Maya LT. But uh, we will try to touch over most of the tools in the toolkit itself and some of the improvements, most of the improvements to the to the actual UV editor. If you have any questions or comments, as always, post them down below in the area blog post comments section or in the YouTube comments section. And I will get to those comments as soon as I possibly can. And otherwise, we hope you enjoy the new UV editor improvements. And again, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. So let's go ahead and check that out. We'll go to our workspaces drop down here and choose the UV editing layout, the default layout that comes with Maya LT and Maya. So here we have our 3D viewport. Go ahead and select the mesh there and uh, get my UV editor opened here on the left with the actual UVs for this guy. Bottom here is our tool settings, uh, pretty much the standard layout for the UV editor workspace. Now the toolkit, that is new is not going to be shown by default. To bring that up, we'll go to Tools, Show UV Toolkit here, right at the top. All right, and we'll click that, and that's gonna bring up the UV Toolkit window. It's not docked by default. Uh, that might be fine for you if you work that way. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull mine over to the left here and dock it. So the first thing you may notice is that the UV Toolkit looks a lot like the Modeling Toolkit. At the very top, it has all of the selection and symmetry options. So for instance, we can select by Vert, by edge, by face, so for instance here selecting by face, also by UV coordinates, and by shell. Now the first option of selection is pick marquee, so that's got a drag box. You can also do uh, click and then shift click. With a drag option it's kind of like painting, so if you click and drag, whatever you mouse over will be painted or selected. Finally the tweak marquee is a little bit interesting. So the pick marquee allows you to do a drag box, but once you've selected those objects, in order to transform them, move them, rotate them, scale them, whatever, you have to actually go to the transform node itself and then do so. But with the tweak marquee, when you select your objects, you can immediately move them no matter where you click on the object. Let's have a look at the display bar inside of the UV editor and see some of the options that we have here. Now obviously by default we have just our UVs laid out, there is no texture displayed, and of course we have our grid displayed. We can actually change the way our UVs are displayed here. First of all we can go into shaded mode and that shades all of the UV shells for us in kind of a bluish color here. We can see that in our 3D viewport as well. If we right mouse button on that, however, we can change that to multicolored UV shells. So each shell has its own color, and this can help visualize your UV shells in the viewport a lot easier. So we can see here we have our right leg here, or I should say our left leg, and here's our left leg easily laid out. That way we can tell which one's the right, which one's the left. And if we shift left mouse button on that icon, we'll get the actual shading options. So we can change to front and back facing where it's shading the front facing UV coordinates differently than the back facing based on the normal direction. We can also change the colors that are being used and uh, so forth. Next up we have UV distortion. We can turn that on and it shows us where our UVs are having distortion issues, where the UVs are maybe too close together. We can see here we have some issues on this shell where we've got some red, but for the most part our UVs are laid out in a nice uniform fashion. If we right click it, we're evaluating that distortion on a per object basis versus the shells themselves. So now we can see the distortion based on the entire object or the entire mesh in this case. We can also see our texture borders. We can turn those on or off. That just gives us a thicker white outline wherever there's a texture border. If we select a shell, we can toggle the selection color of that border to match the borders of other shells. So by turning this toggle on here, 
which is called the shell borders toggle, we can see that underneath the head here, we have yellow and green. Well, those yellow and green borders match up to the yellow and green borders of other shells. So you can see wherever that particular UV coordinate is touching another shell using uh, the color coding. We can turn our grid on and off using this button here and use our grid options would be shift and left mouse button. We can toggle isolation mode on and off on a selection using this button here. And finally, we can take a UV snapshot using the UV snapshot icon here. And this is gonna save out our UV coordinates to a file that we can then take into Photoshop or something like that if we wanted to use it to create a texture. The next button's over, we have the ability to display the texture. And when you click it, it may not show a texture. And that's probably because your dropdown does not have the appropriate material selected. We'll just use the dropdown here. And in this case, we're gonna select this zombie matte base color. Now we can see the actual texture for our UV space here. And we can adjust the brightness of that texture here using this slider. So we have a quite a bit of granularity into how much we can control the darkness of the texture as it's displayed or the brightness of that texture. We can also display the alpha channel of the texture by using this toggle here. Finally, we can display a checker map instead using this button here. So we can see in the viewport, we now have our checker map being displayed and we can control the brightness of that as well. So let's have a look now at the selection constraints and some of the ways that we can adjust our selection in the UV toolkit. The selection constraint has a drop down, and in here we're going to have options like back facing, front facing, geometry borders, texture borders, UV edge loops and rings, and UV shell. Let's first look at back and front facing. Back and front facing refers to the normal direction on a face. So the normal can be facing forwards or it can be facing backwards. Let's do a quick example so you can understand that a little better visually. So if I select a face on my mesh here, we'll go to face mode and select this one face. I can go to mesh display and I can reverse it. You'll notice in the viewport that that face is now black. It's been flipped. So it's not displaying the texture that it normally would. You'll also see in the UV editor panel here that it's got an, a white outline. And that is, of course, uh, the texture border. For instance, I could turn off the texture border and you won't see that white outline here. Now, using selection constraints, I can turn on back facing. And now when I do a click drag, all it selects is that one face because it's the only face that is currently back facing. The normal is reversed. I can also switch to front facing and select everything but that face. Any face that has a, a back facing normal will not be selected. Let's go ahead and change that face back to its normal direction just by reversing it. And we can see here we're back to normal. We also have geometry borders. So for instance, if I were to mouse over, say, the mouth here, we can see that we're getting a geometry border, and that's where the geometry actually ends. There's no geometry past this point. We also have texture borders. We also have UV edge loop and edge ring, pretty self-explanatory, and then finally UV shell, also pretty self-explanatory. You can select the shell. Now, if we want to select all of these, we can obviously click and drag, but we can also use the All button here. We can also clear our selection, and we can also invert our selection. So let's say we have the head selected, but we want everything else. We just hit the Invert button. You can also do this with Control-Shift-I on the keyboard. We also have some ways to modify our selection. So I can modify my selection using these four buttons down here. So if I were to select just this loop here, I can shrink it with this button. I can expand it with the far right button. I can also expand it in both directions using this button, and then I can shrink it in both directions using this button. Let's have a look at the pinning tools now. If we open up the pinning dropdown, these tools are going to allow us to pin vertices or UVs in place so that they cannot be modified. So the default pin tool, before we can use that, requires us to select some UV coordinates. So we'll just do a drag select around his face here. And when we hit the pin button, they'll be outlined or colored in blue, which means they can no longer be modified. So if I go ahead and do a drag select again, selecting some UV coordinates, including parts of the face that have been pinned, try to drag that, you're gonna see that the only ones that are moving are the ones that haven't been frozen in place. You can see some of this is still moving, but that's just because they were kind of on the edge and the fall off of the pinning tool uh, does not completely lock them in place. So for instance, another way to pin this would be to use the pin tool. It's a more interactive way. So let's undo everything and choose the pin tool. 
The pen tool allows us to use a brush, which we can adjust using the B key. Holding down the B key, dragging will adjust the brush. And over here on our tool settings, we can also change the size as well as the strength. You'll notice the strength here on mine is only set to about 80, which means it's not a perfect lockdown whenever I paint over it. And the fall off of the brush is also controlled by our fall off curve here. So the further out of the center of the brush, the less strength there will be on the brush. I can go ahead and set this to 100%, and I could change my fall off if I wanted to, to something a little more extreme, such as completely having no fall off. So now when I paint with my brush, we're getting 100% strength wherever I paint. Wherever the circle of the brush touches, we'll paint that UV space coordinate to 100% pinned. So now when we select the faces and try to move them, we can see that we're moving the ones that aren't painted, but the ones that are are completely locked in place. They are not moving because they've been pinned 100% full fall off uh, on those particular coordinates. Of course, we can do unpinning by, uh, we can invert the pinning. So just click the button here. Now everything but what was pinned is now pinned. And obviously the parts that were pinned are now no longer pinned. We can unpin as well. And that requires a selection. So I'll go ahead and select everything here. Choose unpin. And now everything is uh, free to move again. Or we could, of course, undo that. Not have a selection and choose unpin all. And once again, Nothing is pinned on our UV coordinates here. Next up, we have Select by Type. Opening this dropdown gives us six buttons which allow us to select our UV coordinates by their type. So obviously, we have back facing. And in this case, we do have a back facing spot here. So if we zoom in, we can see that uh, we have a face that is actually has its normal reversed. So now that we have that selected, we could basically go into mesh display and reverse the normal if we wanted to. We can also select front facing. And of course, this is going to select everything else that is front facing. The normal is in the correct direction. So we have no issues there. We can go to overlapping. Clicking this, we're going to find out any of the UV faces that are overlapping with other UV faces. In this case, that same spot where we had a back facing, we also have some overlapping UVs. So we could come in here and correct this now. And of course, not overlapping, that's gonna show us all the ones that are not overlapping. So it's just the invert here of the one before it. Then we have our texture borders. So we've selected all of our texture borders. We can see here, basically every shell has its borders selected. And then anything that has not been mapped. So by clicking unmapped, we can zoom in here. We can see that this particular face has not actually been mapped. So we can come in here and correct that if, need, if we need to. Let's look at some of the transform options. So underneath the transform dropdown, we've got the pivot options and the move options, as well as some tools. Let's look at the pivot options first. So by default, the pivot options require you to have a component selected. So let's just go ahead and select the head shell here. And we can do our pivoting by the selection or by the entire UV area. Let's start with the selection. If I change these pivot options here, you'll see that the pivot jumps around. So here we have top left corner, top right corner, bottom right, bottom left, center, and so forth. And this means that basically whatever pivot I set, if I go into my rotate now, it's going to adjust the UV coordinates based on that pivot. I can also edit the pivot and make it get more fine control over the pivot. So if I go to edit pivot, I can now move the pivot exactly where I want it. So maybe I want it right here in the ear. So now when I rotate, he's rotating around that ear hole. I can also reset the pivot. I can also set UV area. So by using UV area, the pivot will adjust based on the entire UV area, the zero to one space here. So if I do top left, we can see it's in the top left corner, top right, center, and so on. Let's go ahead and reset that. Next up, we have the move category. And here we can actually move the shell or any components we have selected. And this is the value here that it's going to be moved by. So we're setting this, the default value is at 0.1 units in UV space. We can also change this to one or 0 0.01. And when we use the move tool, we have two options here. We can do relative or absolute. With relative, when we click one of these buttons, we can see it's moving relative to its position, and it's moving the amount that we've specified here, 0.1 unit on our UV coordinate space. If we change this to absolute, 
Now when we make adjustments, it's going to move based on absolute coordinate space, the actual value. So the value we have is 0.1. So if we click on the U here, that means that we have now moved our shell down to the 0.1 U coordinate. That is right here. If we click on the V value, the V button, we can see it's also been moved now to the 0.1 V space, uh, which is right here. And now we can see it's at 0.1 and 0.1. We could just undo that and do UV to begin with, and that'll put it at exactly 0.1, 0.1 in our UV coordinates. And of course, this can also be done to individual UV coordinates, as well as faces and edges and so forth. We can also turn off the snapping, so our step snap here. So when we do movements, we can see right now we're snapping to 0.1. If we turn that back off, we're now free to move to basically any position in our UV coordinate space. We can also distribute our UV coordinates. So let's say I wanted this, this face shell. Let's go ahead and select the shell. Let's say I wanted it to take up the entire width of my UV or my texture map, UV zero to one. And I can do this using distribute. So with the shell selected, I'm just gonna control click the UV coordinates here to select them, hit distribute. And now that is stretched out in the horizontal or U, it stretched the entire shell out so that it fits the entire texture map. I can also do the same thing on the V coordinates. And now the head has been stretched out to fit the entire texture map. Of course, we can change the distribution here so I could bring it down to 0.5, hit the distribute button, and we'll have it at half of the size of our, in this case, the V coordinate of our texture map. Hey, you've been watching the new UV Editor workflow and UV Toolkit improvements to Maya and Maya LT 2017 Update 3. I'm Matthew Doyle with Autodesk. I hope you've enjoyed this part one. Part two will be coming soon and we'll cover the rest of the tools in the editor that we haven't already covered. And that will include all of the improvements as far as performance improvements and updates to the visual aspects of the editor. And we'll also cover some modeling improvements such as quad draw modeling improvements and a few other things. So be sure to watch out for part two. We hope you have enjoyed this part. If you have any questions or comments, as always, post them down below in the comments on the area or in YouTube, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time and have a good day.